In this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Box Collider 2Ds. So I've set this little scene up. We have a box up here, which is just called Box Alt. And then I've gone ahead and taken a bunch of sprites. It's just the castle mid block that I have in my grouping of sprites. But I've gone ahead and just duplicated it over and over again to get uh, a platform under my box. So let's actually start off with the box itself. Let's go and add a component. And what we're looking for is the Box Collider. Now there's two different types here. The first one, the Box Collider, that works with the 3D physics engines inside of Unity. Now this one is based off of Physics 3.3, I believe at the time of this recording. And the one under it is based off of Box 2D, and I'm not sure the version on that one. But they're two separate physics engines. They can't intermingle and they won't work together. Later on in this series, we'll take a look at how to intermingle 3D objects and 2D objects together in our scene. We just can't mix the physics engines. So I'm going to go ahead and add a Box 2D Collider. And I'll zoom in a bit on my box here. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's the green outline around my box. If I go ahead and turn my sprite render off, maybe you can see it a bit better. That's the actual collider itself. Now let's say we have an oddly shaped sprite that we're trying to put a collider on. We can go ahead and click the little button here beside the Edit Collider label. And we can go ahead and adjust the size just by clicking on these dots. Of course, if you click off of it, it automatically turns off the edit. And you can undo it with Control z or Command-Z. There we go. Now the option under that is for adding a physical material 2D. We'll take a look at those later on in the series as well. But you can control how sticky or how bouncy this game object is going to be with it. For now, know that if you do go ahead and create a new physics material 2D, this is where you put it. The two main ways that you're going to detect the collisions between the two colliders it's going to be using either the on collision system or the on trigger enter system. So if we zoom out a bit and we take a look here at my platform, if I don't have is triggered set on either of my colliding game objects, when they hit each other, they're just going to stop. Now, sure, I can move along this one here, but I can't go through it. Where if one or both of them are set to be is trigger, I can go ahead and pass right through here. Now we can still detect when they, they've actually collided through the on trigger enter, on trigger stay, and on trigger exit. But as far as the mechanics in our game goes, you're still going to be able to pass right through. Now this is great if we want to set up maybe some sort of uh, pressure plate over here so that when our players walk along and he goes into that pressure plate, maybe a bunch of arrows shoot or maybe a trap door opens up, maybe a drawbridge comes down. There's uses for both of them, and we'll be using quite a bit of them as we go ahead and start creating 2D games. Now, used by effectors, there's certain effectors that we can apply to game objects that have colliders. For instance, the buoyancy effector allows us to go ahead and simulate water physics. We'll be taking a look at these a little bit later on in the series. So I'm going to zoom back in for the offset and size, and this does exactly what you think. We can go ahead with the offset on the X, move it side to side. On Y, we move it up and down. And for the size, of course, we can make it bigger or smaller on the X or bigger and smaller on the Y. And that's it. We have some info here. If we go ahead and open it up, there's stuff we can't edit, but well, stuff we can still see. For instance, we do not have a rigid body attached to this, as it tells us here. Since we do not have a physical material attached, we get the default values of 0.4 for friction. Uh, you'll hear me interchangeably use the word stickiness and friction. They mean the exact same thing. In Unity, they call it friction. In other systems I've used over the years, it's been stickiness. And of course, we have the bounciness of zero, but we can't edit any of this stuff directly. So let's take a look here. Let's say we wanted our cube to be able to run along this platform. A lot of people, when they're putting their platforms in, they'll come, go ahead and put a box. Whoops, I did a box collider. I did not mean that. It will not work. We need a box collider 2D. They'll go ahead and put a box collider 2D on everything. If I go ahead and turn off their sprites, you can see them. And now when we go to play our game, our guy's going to land on it and it'll actually work. You'll be able to run. The problem is, is as your levels get bigger, we're going to get a ton of colliders. And we, we want to reduce the amount of colliders that we actually have in our game. If we don't need, was it six different colliders here? Since it's just one platform, we can get rid of a bunch of them. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all these colliders. I'm going to go ahead, uh, let's take the center one. Well, it doesn't really matter which one we pick. I'm going to go ahead and create an empty. And I'm just going to call it platform. And what I'm going to do is select all the components in that platform, or at least all the sprites. 
and I'm just going to drag them underneath that. And you know they're underneath because when we hit this little drop down arrow, they all disappear. And now I can just add a box collider here, or a box collider 2D, I should say. And of course, since we know how to reshape it and move it, we can go ahead and hit that edit collider. Now we should zoom in to get a better fit. But I'm just trying to do this really quick for demonstration purposes. There we go. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drag it out. Like I said, I'm just gonna do it really quick. I see the bottom. Oh, it's annoying me. But there we go. We now only have one collider. We'll go ahead and select it for all six of those blocks. So we've actually removed five colliders that we didn't need. It's still gonna work. When he drops down, he's gonna hit that collider and he's gonna run along. The only difference is that we don't have colliders on each and every single individual one. Now, there are certain instances where, think of Super Mario, where they had the one block with a question mark right in the middle. So let's say this is our question mark block. Now we could have this be all one collider over here for these two or three blocks and the same over here. Then have this one have its own individual collider. So when he runs and jumps up and hits it, you know, it pops out our mushroom or our flower or whatever we need. That works too. And we're still only gonna get three colliders versus the five. So I guess the point I'm trying to drive home here is you want as few colliders as possible. Sure, it's easy just to go ahead and say, I'm gonna put a collider on this, make it prefab and just drag it everywhere in the scene. That could lead to a lot of tidying up later on. So just keep that in mind when you're designing your levels. So if we go ahead, take the box, drag it up, hit play. Even though we have colliders and they can actually interact with each other, we don't have the actual physics set up so that we can, we can interact with each other. So let's take a look at that in the next video. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>